come from somewhere else But this is where we found ourselves Welcome to the local show People you work with, people you know <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the local show here on Grassroots Community Network. I'm Eric Scarvin, your host. Welcome to our Facebook Live audience and YouTube audience. So excited to have a first-time guest. Been following her career closely, especially the last several years, as she is now a member of the U.S. ski team. I want to welcome Haley Swerble to the show. It's a good thing we both have long arms. Yeah, Haley. thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Yeah, and our co-host Luna <laughs> may ask a couple provocative questions. Okay, good. Like, can you rub my tummy while I nap now? <laughs> of course. She, she has really oh. deep, deep thoughts. Yeah. She's a good little girl, though. Yeah, she's a sweetie. So, do you guys have a dog in your family? Did you we, grow up with a doggy? We do, yeah. She's okay. old. She's getting old. She's what, 14, I think now. Wow. So I'm watching her. What kind of dog? Uh, Black Lab. Black Lab. She's a sweetie. A retriever who doesn't retrieve, though. Oh, no. She's never <laughs> fetched. But... You didn't return her for being faulty. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> Take retriever. her back. <laughs> Train her in. Retrieve your retriever. It's not retrieving. Yeah. <laughs> they say it weren't. It yeah, ain't working. she's awesome, though. Well, let's back up a little bit um, to growing up in the Valley, because you were born in, actually, in Grand Junction, yep. St. Mary's Hospital, mm -hmm. but pretty much grew up in the Valley, correct? Yeah, I did. I Bounced around, uh, our family lived in Aspen for a time, and then we moved um, down to Car well, Algebel, I guess, between Carbondale and Basalt. And okay. we've been there for 14 years since we got the dog. Nice, um, nice. Yeah, so we're still there. That's cool. Well, yeah. I mean, it's amazing, obviously, just living in the valley, but growing up here must have been super special. Yeah. And what were some of those, I mean, Aspen Valley Ski Club yep. was a big influence for you. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, what were some of those kind of like those highlights of growing up here? Kind of as you go back to like childhood and maybe starting skiing. Yeah. What are some of those things that you really remember yeah. from growing up? I spent so much time outdoors, which is such an amazing part of this community, I think. And yeah. being out in the mountains and playing and following my older brother around a lot. Um, <laughs> our family would go mountain biking a lot and climb, like, I don't know, hiking and just be outside and go camping. But yeah, I started skiing in fifth grade, so I was a little bit older by oh, then. Yeah, um, by Valley standards, that's like, you know. Right, well, I, cross country. I mean, I was okay. always downhill, downhill since I could walk, you know. Oh, okay, that's, okay, okay. That's, that's how it is here. Exactly. Um, like, you're, you're walking, you're strider biking, and then you're skiing yep. that year. Yes, exactly. Like between, like, two and three or something. Exactly. <laughs> and then by the time you were yep. fifth grade, you started cross country skiing. I did, yeah, because my brother... Uh, we did mountain bike racing in the summers, and right. he had he's in he was in seventh grade at the time, and he decided he wanted to stay fit during the winter. Ah. So he's like, "We're gonna try cross country skiing." So I was oh. like, "Okay, let's go! Like, we'll, I'll I'll follow him." You know, he's he was the <laughs> god, and in my eyes as a youngster, and so yeah, oh. I I joined that, followed him. But before that, actually, we had both um, been doing freestyle team with ABSC. Oh, I didn't know that. So okay. I was I was uh, planning on joining the Moguls team that next year, but we did cross country instead. So your brother Keegan has yep. been a major influence. Yeah, Now absolutely. he's a pro bike racer. He is, yeah. I like to call him Flying Swerble. Yeah. <laughs> Following his career too. Yeah, yeah. So that's incredible. So you guys kind of paralleled, Yeah. no pun intended, but your sports. <laughs> There's parallel skiing or Nordic <laughs> right. or bike racing with the Aspen Cycling Club, right? Right, You absolutely. guys have done some bike racing. Yeah. And obviously Keegan just kept going up the bike racing ladder. Yeah. We'll have to get him on the show. Yeah, for when, sure. When he's, he's around. He's in uh, Utah at the Tour of Utah Oh, is he right at Tour of Utah, which yeah. is going on right now? Yep. I think they might be racing actually right now. Oh, man. That is so cool. That's awesome. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. So uh, your family, like, is has been, you know, such a huge influence, you know, especially your brother Keegan. But your parents, I mean, they have to be, like, the most supportive, <laughs> yeah. some of the most supportive parents to take you through all these stages of athletics, Absolutely. especially with the Nordic skiing, yeah. now on the U.S. ski team. Can you talk a little bit about your parents' uh, influence on you? I think they, well, to produce two endurance athletes yeah they didn't really have an endurance sport background like my dad really was a diver like a pool diver okay uh, my mom did track and they did swimming and stuff like that but it really was not at all related to either cycling or cross-country skiing they 
found those spores later in life. And I think <laughs> what was amazing about growing up with my family is they, they let my brother and I find those spores instead of pushing us into them. And I think that's why we're both able to still love them today. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, I'm serious. And I think my parents, like, thank you so much to my parents. They, <laughs> they've been so helpful and, and understanding and, like, supportive of the type of lifestyle that you need as an elite athlete, which I think is, is really hard. Like, yeah. I don't know. My my dad always wants my brother to mow the lawn, but but, <laughs> he's like, but he has to rest, ride. you know. Yeah, he's like, oh, I have to do a five hour ride. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. so um, uh, overall, they've they've been so helpful with that, you know, like making healthy food and like recovery snacks and just helping us become our best, which is That's really cool. That's interesting because they allowed you guys the freedom to kind of pick the sports yeah. where a lot of parents are really heavy duty, right. almost forcing certain sports. Right. And then not only a certain sport, but you're going to do it a lot yep. and hopefully you're going to like it. Yeah. And, and so your parents gave you guys more freedom, yeah. flexibility. And then of course, as you progressed, the freedom, flexibility and support to do the training in particular, maybe instead of other activities yep. or responsibilities that they might've wanted you guys to, you know, do instead. Right. So really supportive all the way. Yeah. Uh, all the way to yeah. the current day, it sounds like. Yeah, well... Do you want to give a shout-out to your mom and dad? Yeah. Thank you, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best. Well, I'm going to give a shout-out to my summer underwriters. We're going to take a quick break. Luna, you can rehydrate, too. We'll hydrate <laughs> during the break. we got some heavy talking to do, you guys. Talking intervals, in fact, coming up. <laughs> I want to thank my summer underwriters, Aspen Square, Klug Properties, the Independence Pass Foundation, Picking County Landfill and Sundog Athletics. We'll go to our only break of the show. We'll be back in two minutes with U.S. Ski Team member and multiple world championship medalist Haley Swerble and some of her secrets to success. So don't go away. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Celebrating another great summer season, Aspen Square Hotel is the hospitality place featuring fireplace studio suites and larger condominiums with full hotel style services in the center of downtown Aspen Aspen Square is proud to support The Locals Show. Curbside recycling is now included with your trash service in Pitkin County. You can reduce your waste footprint and shrink your trash bill by recycling right. Learn more at landfillrules.com. The Independence Pass Foundation, for 30 years restoring and protecting the ecological, historical, and aesthetic integrity of Independence Pass. To learn more, independencepass.org. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's Adventure Sports School, is your opportunity to experience the most beautiful adventure locations and gain new skills to be safer, perform better, and have more fun. Fresh updates on mountain and road biking, hiking, canoeing, snowshoeing, and fat biking adventures at sundogathletics.com, Sundog Athletics on Facebook and Instagram. Welcome to We're back here on The Local Show. Thanks for sticking with us, locals, and our worldwide audience on the interweb, I like to say. <laughs> Facebook Live, YouTube, we're all over the place now. Haley, we have podcast. Oh. So listen to The Local Show, starring Haley Swerble on the go while you're out hiking up Smuggler. Cool, <laughs> on yeah. Podcast. I'll see you out there. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> thanks for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Taking your time. And let's we kind of brought people through growing up in the valley and some of those influences. Yeah. And, You've been training, though, for this coming season already since the spring. Yep. And we've got a fun picture of you in training camp. Uh, was that up in Oregon back yep. in May? Yep. Then, okay. Yeah. And what do you guys do like that early in the season Yeah, uh, we, with the spring training? That early, we're just building our base. We do a lot okay. of distance training. So we ski okay. for four, four to five hours a day and um, 
do some longer fun? intervals. Oh yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Bend is a really cool place to train too. We ski in the morning and then we either roller ski with our skis on wheels or wow. uh, run or bike in the afternoon. And is that, um, what's that, uh, Mount Hood? Or Mount it's Bachelor? Mount Bachelor, Mount yeah. Mount Bachelor, mm -hmm. okay, where you can find some snow. Yep. Yep. And so that's super cool. So more base building. Yeah. And for people like, and I, I'm very familiar, you know, through yeah. bike racing. But you, can you describe, I kind of describe it like building the foundation of your house. Can you kind of talk about like the importance of that? Because I think that's good for any athlete. Yeah. You know, whether they're recreational or professional. Yeah, absolutely. I think you can't ask your body to tap into those higher tiers of the pyramid without having that foundation with a lot of hours and easy distance training, especially if you're yeah. an endurance athlete. I mean, I think that applies to skill sports, ball sports too, you know, like you need to have that foundation and those basics down before you can really progress and use your body to its full potential right. and mind. I mean, I think um, at least in, in our sport, and I've heard this in other things, like the 10,000 hour rule. Have you heard of this? Yes, I have. Yeah. When you're considered a master right. or expert. Right. And I think field. that's, as a stretch, that's what you need in your foundation. You right. know, like you need that many hours to build strength and to build repetition, like these habits on how to ski well and practice technique and or and run well. It anything. must also be a really interesting opportunity because you're a relatively new member to the U.S. ski team yeah. to kind of bond with your teammates, right? You're out in these four or five hour training yeah. sessions. And um, what's that relationship like, like with your teammates? It, it seems like from the images I've seen, it's pretty fun. And yeah. you guys have a lot of fun it's out a, there. It's a really incredible environment. This team, the U.S. team works really hard on making that team environment. And I know that they have the reputation to be like, oh, best friends and best teammates and we all love each other but <laughs> I think more importantly they focus on being best teammates rather than best yeah. friends to one another and that means respecting your teammates and yeah. and accepting their differences and doing what you need while also accepting that you have a part in their success if that makes any sense like you sure. trained with them and pushed them and helped them get to where they are but it is really special to be able to train with Olympic gold medalists like Jesse Diggins or Sadie Bjornsson has been an amazing teammate or um, all those older older women on the team have been awesome. And the older men too, like local Simi Hamilton and Noah Hoffman. Right. We see so have those guys been too. able to mentor you a little bit or help you out you yeah. know, in some fashion? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, bit. Simi's yeah. retired now. Or, um, I'm sorry, Noah's retired now. Yep. From yep. the U.S. team. But Simi's still on the team. Yes, right? Simi's still going. Because he's got to be the old man of the team by Yeah, now. he's getting married. He's like... Uh, uh, that's incredible. Yeah, it's awesome. Life is happening. Yeah. <laughs> and he's still doing it. So yeah. how those guys kind of helped you out? Or have they given you yeah. some advice? They've they've kind of been there from when I was back in Navy SC, they would come yeah. visit and that made such a difference in my ski career, like having those those people to look up to and see and be like, oh my gosh, they're real people and they're here and they're talking to me. Right. That was really cool. It, um, made, it made it real because they're such local role models, yeah. right? They're like doing it. These guys grew up here. They're yeah. doing it. Yeah, exactly. So that's inspirational as well. Yeah, it really was for me growing up, but I... Um, I mean, I haven't seen Noah at all this year. Well, I saw him actually at Sadie Bjornsson's wedding. He officiated that this summer, but it was good to catch up with him okay. um, and Simi. And yeah, I don't know. They've they've just been the locals, so yeah. it's cool. Yeah, they're great. They're great. We're so proud of those guys. Yeah. And uh, have had I think both of those guys have been on the local show as well. So cool. we'll make sure to get them back and circle back with those guys. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some of the competitions because. Um, Prior to this spring and the training we were just speaking of, you had done the Junior Worlds, uh, was that a couple years ago now? Two seasons ago, yeah. Two seasons mm -hmm. ago, and we're the first American to win two medals yeah, at I, World Championships? Right. I Under 23? This was under 20. Under 20. So I'm under 23 uh, this past season. Okay. Um, so the season before that, I was under 20, and yeah, I, I earned the first... It might have been the first individual medal. No, the besides, well, the year before someone had, but the first second place 
medal um, individually, and then I was, I guess I'm still the most decorated junior by, by in history the by okay. getting, well, I have three medals three, now. I guess, total with the one relay medal and two individuals, which is cool. That's amazing. So, so congratulations on that. Thank you. And that was kind of your springboard into the team, wasn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. Like you get this uh, recognition at, at Junior Worlds. Yeah. Three medals in total. Yeah. And now you're on the team. And then you would start racing some World Cup this yep. past season. Yeah. And we have an image of your competition. I think it's your second World Cup race in, in Quebec. Yep. Can you tell us yep. a little bit about that experience? Yeah, with the, with the stars in the big and time? stripes. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was this spring, so at the end, kind of at the end of our season this year, and okay, uh, yeah, that was my first mini tour. So that means there's three races back to back to back, a sprint, wow. and then a distance, and then a pursuit. So the pursuit is based off of how you've done the previous few days, and then however you finish is how you finish the whole weekend, and you win the tour or whatever the mini tour. But I gotcha. Um, it's crazy it's intimidating to be on the world <laughs> cup with these with these like, world i mean oh, champions like Teresa yohog like right. they're they're on a different level which is is really inspiring and cool and i have i've set some goals to try to get to that level and i know it's going to take time but i'm willing to put that time in but so how long do you think that takes like to get i mean i'm sure it's there's no definite time frame. Yeah. But say to get from where you are on the team to being one of the best on the team. I mean, we're talking about two years, five years, any any time frame. Right. Kind of? I think it it varies for yeah. each person. There's sure. some people that come in at 18 years old and are winning the whole World Cup. And there's some people that at 30 years old start to do their best. So uh -huh. I Hard think it, it's, it's, it's impossible to say. I think it, right. you just need to set those smaller attainable goals and and try to pick pick your way up at least that's that's what i need to do i i think so what would be a like what would be a goal or two for the season ahead yeah which will be your first full season right on the world cup or was last last winter your first full season no um i this will be my my first full period on the world cup so it's broken okay. into four or five different chunks of the year okay and this well I'm not going to be over in Europe the entire season because it's it's tough especially as a young athlete I think it's really hard and can burn people out quite a bit so okay. the U.S. coaches have been really helpful and um, encouraging and kind of let me decide what and my club coach and I um, and the U.S. coaches all work together to decide what's in my best interest to like hopefully be one of the best in the world one day and I think being in Europe all year is not the thing for this year right a little too much too yeah, soon but yeah so I will be going over to Europe in uh period one so that's like November through Christmas almost okay um yeah so that's that's and do you really have like a result in your mind as far as a goal like I want to get top yeah. 30 yeah exactly like that? that's actually my goal yeah I've <laughs> I've made a deal with myself that if I if I get a top 30, which would be my first World Cup point ever, then I'm going to cut my hair. Oh, really? <laughs> cut it down to my How shoulder. Short? Like shoulders. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's and then you'd be bet. more aerodynamic too? Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Plus all that hair weight. You know, yeah, exactly. Strength yeah, to weight yeah, ratio. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's huge. <laughs> yeah. That's, so top 30 that's, in a European World Cup race in period one, which is like two months long something like that it's a it's about a it's month part of a season yeah yeah okay yeah okay yeah well um and then you made the podium at the i don't know if and I'm, we're a little bit maybe out of order but um at u.s nationals in the seniors so yeah. you're not a junior anymore you're a senior yeah and we've got a podium shot and you were second or third yeah, it was the third American, yeah. Third American, at US, okay, at nationals. And what event was that? That was the 20K skate. So that's a, okay. long, a long distance one. Right, yeah. right. What's it in miles? Like 12 miles? Oh, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Tastes throw me off yeah. sometimes. And I should yeah, know that I know. as a bike it, racer. Yeah, in the but Nordic But for the lay world. person, 12-ish right. miles. Yeah. Skating. I think so. With the top athletes. <laughs> yes, yeah, this should be about 12 or 13. Yeah. Top American athletes. Yep. In that particular one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's been the most, like, I guess, and I would kind of, I guess, my 
my thinking would be world championships. But what's been the highlight so far, like of your um, ski racing, Nordic ski racing career? Ooh, that's tough. It's <laughs> tough to put to put that on it. Um, I honestly, I I think the the magic has been in meeting people around the world and around the country okay for me like that's what is going to stand out in my mind the most like i think winning these junior worlds medals is a really awesome and a really great memory but yeah it's not just the medal that matters to me like i'm not only in it for winning like i'm in it right. for the journey and the training and the process and like meeting all these people and that's what's what's really special to me so okay um yeah, yeah. So the traveling, know, the meeting these people, whether it's competitors, whether it's coaches, whether it's fans, yeah. but just that kind of that social experience. Exactly, yeah. And I think more than the social experience, it's being able to push myself individually and find my limit in that way okay. is really cool. Okay. What would be your advice like for the recreational athlete? Like we're winding up our kind of summertime in Aspen and... I think it would be natural time to start thinking about winter training, you know, I mean, as yeah. we, especially as we come into the most gorgeous month of September. Yeah. But what would be just some like basic advice, whether people are getting ready for alpine skiing or Nordic skiing or snowshoeing or fat biking, some of my favorites. Yeah. Like, do you have any general advice like for the recreational athlete? I kind of setting up for the winter yeah. sports. I think what helps get me through is making sure I'm having fun doing yeah. whatever, which is a cliche answer, but I think it's really important to get outside and kind of appreciate nature for the smaller parts of it. And I don't know, it's, it's humbling to be out there and just take a deep breath and be like, wow, this is amazing that I get to be out here and do this and look at kind of your fitness and training or getting ready for winter as an opportunity rather than a chore, which I think yeah. so many people are in, on the elliptical or something and it's just to work out. But I think yeah. that Going can through be, the motions. Exactly. Like it yeah. can be so much more enjoyable to get outside and climb the Ute trail or something, you know, just yeah. get outside. It's so beautiful. It's so nice and it's just refreshing for your yeah. mind. I like to say it's not called the great indoors. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. So being outside, really appreciating nature, have fun with it. Yeah. I like to bring in, like, variety, too. Like, yep. it's fun to do a variety. Absolutely. Especially if you're not a... Or maybe even if you are a specialist, like, you really love Nordic skiing. That's your main focus, your passion. Yeah. But to bring in a variety of, like, get out and do some mountain biking, do some hiking, do some rollerblading. Yeah. This is the time of season I start to blade. Yeah. It's actually great prep for winter sports like Nordic skiing. For sure. Uh, alpine skiing, especially when you make turns, like yeah. coming down Maroon Creek Road. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So that's super fun. That's and you would awesome. roller ski up, right? Yeah, I think I might that do that this training. afternoon, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Cool. Um, pursuing your dreams. This is like um, the basis of the local show because we like to feature great locals, whether they're athletes or artists or musicians or entrepreneurs. And these are people I heard going after their dreams like mm -hmm. yourself they're also having success but a lot of people out in life are really afraid to do that there's risk yeah like what happens if it doesn't work out yeah like financially what happens if it doesn't work out what would be some advice like for people who are thinking about their dreams but just can't quite get off the fence and go after them right i think i have a little bit more of a reserved mentality for this kind of thing i think some people are are happy to put all their eggs in one basket and just jump on board like this is how my brother is kind of uh handling Keegan. his cycling career yeah he's okay. he's going for it which is awesome and i really respect that but i think what allows me to reach my potential and pursue this dream is knowing that i have a balance in my life a little bit so i'm also taking classes at uh in university um, and getting my degree and I think that's something that that I know is there as well like I I understand that sport is awesome and I have dreams in sport and I want to be the best classic skier in the world one day that's my my dream and goal but I also think that there's more to life and it's important to to live life as it comes a little bit and enjoy it as it's coming and and um 
yeah, like school's something else I have a goal with and um, friends and social and I don't know. Like I, I, I commit a lot to skiing, but I also think it's important to have a balance. Okay. So go after your dream, yeah. but also be balanced in that you have, you're well-rounded. Yeah. So maybe if it doesn't work out, right. you've got plan B. I, yeah, I mean, got a backup plan. That stinks to see it as like a backup plan. <laughs> I know. It's almost know. like a parallel or your next, plan. Or your, it could be, yeah, your next stage. Right. You're working on your next stage. Right. It's not just, okay, I'm going to do this, but then I, I may want to do this and this with my life. Yeah. I may want to like race and be one of the top Nordic racers in the country or the world. Yeah. But then I might want to do, you know, whatever other, your other goals, which is why you're also taking classes. Yeah. So be balanced, be well-rounded. Yeah. And I think it's really helpful to, to set smaller goals okay. along the way I like that. Um, to get to your dreams, whatever that is, whether that's in school or work or sport or art, like you need to be able to see the path to get to that next goal. It seems, right. It seems impossible to sit here right now and be like, oh, I'm going to climb to the top of the maroon bells. But like right now, that sounds really far away. But if you can break it up and say, oh, well, I'll yeah. get to this first hill and then maybe you can have a water break or something and get keep moving and moving up and up. I think that's what really helps me chase those those dreams right these incremental steps these smaller goals leading to the big goal yeah. set those yeah i like to say a little step is still a step absolutely so whether it's for me cleaning my apartment yeah <laughs> or working towards a bike race yeah. that i have on the horizon yes. like i'm aiming for that maroon creek time trial yeah in september that's awesome but yeah the tr the smaller goals to to bring you to the bigger goal yeah. i like that because yeah. then it just seems like more attainable right it doesn't seem as daunting Exactly, and I think it helps you live in the present a little bit more and enjoy what you're doing now for what it is instead of wishing you were somewhere else. Right. It reminds me of the old joke, you know, how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> One bite at a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Like, it seems so daunting. Yeah. And then you ask, well, why would I want to eat it? Like, isn't that really tough meat? <laughs> and like, dude, I'm a vegan. <laughs> Oh but you're just God. one bite at a time. Yeah. <laughs> so little, little goals. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've got, I'm speaking of bites <laughs> and these are really good bites. They're not elephant bites. Oh my God. You could take an elephant sized bite out of these cookies. Oh, I definitely will. I, I baked you some organic oh, chocolate chip cookies. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I hope you had fun on the show today. Thank you. Did you have these fun? Awesome. It did. It was awesome. Thank yeah. you for being here. Thanks Haley. so much for having me. Congratulations on all your success. Thank I can't you. wait to see what you do. This winter and many winters to come. Thanks. You too. And, and good luck as a student as well. Thank you. That shows how well-rounded you are. <laughs> so cool. Try. Thanks, Haley Swerble. And thank you guys thank for watching you. this week on The Local Show. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Curbside recycling is now included with your trash service in Pitkin County. You can reduce your waste footprint and shrink your trash bill by recycling right. Learn more at landfillrules.com. The Independence Pass Foundation, for 30 years restoring and protecting the ecological, historical, and aesthetic integrity of Independence Pass. To learn more, independencepass.org. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's Adventure Sports School, is your opportunity to experience the most beautiful adventure locations and gain new skills to be safer, perform better, and have more fun. Fresh updates on mountain and road biking, hiking, canoeing, snowshoeing, and fat biking adventures at sundogathletics.com, Sundog Athletics on Facebook and Instagram. Welcome to